In the previous video, I talked about set systems and how large they can be if you restrict um, the sizes of the sets and of the intersections of pairs of sets, mod two. And now I'm going to talk about what happens if you talk about uh, not mod two, but mod P for larger primes P. And in fact, I'm going to talk about a very specific um, situation, although the techniques that I talk about will apply much more generally. But I, I think I'm going to talk about the specific case and leave the more general um, things that you can prove using similar arguments to the example sheet. Uh, so I'm going to consider the following question. Uh, we'll have P being an odd prime. By the way, this is a particularly important special case, which is why I'm talking about it. We'll take N to be 4P. And uh, we'll assume that uh, A is a collection of subsets of N of size N over 2. Uh, so I um, just say this in, in a different way. That's saying that uh, the sets in the set system have size 2P. And I'm going to place just one constraint on them, which is seemingly a very mild constraint, which is that if A and B belong to A, then A intersect B uh, does not have size P. And the question is, how large can A be? So we can imagine that n might be rather large. <clears throat> um, so we just pick a very large prime and uh, multiply it by four, so we get a, a large integer. And then there's only one intersection size that we're ruling out. And uh, the number of sets that we could in principle choose, the number of sets of size 2p, um, is roughly 2 to the n, so 2 to the n over root n. So sort of ignoring um, powers of n, it's uh, pretty much all the sets that you can have. Um, and we're just ruling out, out of all the uh, n possible intersection sizes, we're just, well, actually no, so n over two possible intersection, or n over two plus one intersection sizes, we're just ruling out one of them. Um, and it's going to turn out that this will um, actually force the size of a to be exponentially smaller than um, 2 to the n. It's really quite uh, extraordinary that that's the case. Um, so let's see how to prove that. So the first step I'm going to uh, throw away one set from each complementary pair. If there are any complementary pairs. Uh, so I will do that in that, that way. So notice that uh, if I've got a set in the set system, um, there's only one other set that can be disjoint from that set that belongs to the set system because the sets have size 2p and that is exactly the complement of that set. So uh, that means that um, if I throw away um, one set from each complementary pair, then I get that no two sets in what's left are disjoint. So I can do that and I'll get a set of set system of size at least half what I had before. So if I can get a bound on that, then I can just double that bound and get a bound for the size of um, A itself. So for this system, so actually let's just call that system curly A, but just remember at the end, I'm going to have to double my double the bound. So now we have that, uh, that if A and B belong to curly A and A does not equal B, then that implies that uh, A intersect B, the size is not zero put a knot in there, not zero mod p. So all the sets have size zero mod p, but uh, the intersections do not have size zero mod p because uh, the only possibilities for the intersections are zero p and two p, 
if the intersection has size 2p, then they're not unequal. They must be the same set. We've, step, we've made sure that no intersections have size 0. So the only thing left is p. And we're saying that uh, we're by hypothesis, there aren't any intersections of size p. So now I want to find a polynomial that uh, oh, actually, so first thing to say, we're going to use linear algebra, but it's going to be a bit more complicated than in the case where um, p equals two. So this is a bit like the case where the sets are even, but their intersections are odd. But now it's the sets are zero mod p, but their intersections are non-zero mod p. And that's not going to be, um, it's not going to be quite enough just to use, uh, it's not going to be quite as simple as it is in, in the case p equals two. We can't just immediately use linear algebra, but we're going to use a polynomial in a way that should be becoming increasingly familiar given some of the examples that I've shown so far. So um, what we'll do is the following. So uh, given a in curly A, let FA be the polynomial defined by the formula FA of X equals, right, so first of all, I'm going to get something that uh, when X, so I shall be interested in this principally when X is a characteristic function of a set B. So if I want to look at the size of A intersect B, then the quantity that I'm interested in is going to be X i. So if X is the characteristic function of B, that will just be the size of the intersection of A and B mod P. So this is going to be mod P sum. Now, I want this to um, I, I want to get this uh, sort of delta AB type thing again. So I'm, I actually want this to be zero um, when the intersection is not zero mod P and one when it is zero mod P. Um, so what I'm going to do is a trick that we've already seen. Oh, variance of this trick. So here, if the size so if, if this number here is not zero mod p, then by Fermat's little theorem, uh, when I raise to the power p minus one, I'll get a one. And then the one minus that will give me zero. And uh, if on the other hand, this is zero mod p, then I'll get zero here. And so this thing will be one. So now let's just observe that uh, if x equals the characteristic function of b for some b in curly a, then f a x equals one if a equals b, because then uh, the intersection has size two p, which is uh, zero mod p. But uh, if A doesn't equal B, then by the condition that we have here, uh, the size of the intersection is not zero mod P. So that means that this sum will not be zero mod P. So it'll be this P minus first power will be one and we get zero as I've just been talking about. So zero if A doesn't equal B. And so this proves once again, Um, so let me just write it, summarize what I've just established. We've got that FA of chi B equals delta AB. And whenever you've got something like that, you have uh, linear independence. So the polynomials, we just regard these polynomials as being functions defined on the set curly A. And uh, we established that we've got um, that we've got we, we've got the, the polynomial takes a value one in one place and zero everywhere else, and so they must be uh, linearly independent. So the, the polynomials uh, F A are linearly independent. Now it looks pretty much as though it's game over, but it's not quite game over because. The next stage of the linear algebra argument 
is to show that they live in a low dimensional space. And what can we do here? We can say, well, these are polynomials in n variables of degree at most p minus one. And if you start to think about how many such polynomials there are, you rapidly find that the estimate that you can get is bigger than two to the n. And so it seems as though in the end you've proved absolutely nothing by this rather nice proof. Um, fortunately, a small extra idea rescues us from this disappointment. And that is that uh, it's a very, very useful fact that uh, if um, epsilon equals naught or one, then uh, let's say and r greater than or equal to one, epsilon to the r equals epsilon. So what that's going to allow us to do is to replace the FAs by some other polynomials in which no XI appears with power greater than one. So this is the sort of clever observation. Let's just highlight it with an arrow. So now replace each FA by a new polynomial GA uh, and how do we do it? Um, by replacing each um, x, so each occurrence of uh, a non zero power of xi by xi. So if it's xi cubed, we just remove the cube and we just have xi. So what can we conclude? We don't, uh, ga is not the same polynomial as fa or anything like that, but what we do have is that then um, if x belongs to naught one to the n, then fa of x equals ga of x. So all the coordinates are zero or one and um, We've just replaced the powers of xi by xi, and it makes no difference because xi is either zero or when xi is either zero or one. So now, um, therefore, everything we said before holds because the characteristic function of b takes values zero or one. So ga of, X, of chi b is also delta AB. So the GA are independent. And uh, therefore, um, the size of A is at most the number of monomials in x1 up to xn of degree at most p minus 1 with each xi um, occurring with multiplicity at most one. Otherwise known as multilinear monomials. Um, because that'll be the, the uh, dimension of the space of polynomials that uh, everything lives in. And how many of these are? Well, that's easy enough. That's just the number of subsets of, well, at most the number of, well, actually exactly, the number of subsets of one to n of size at most p minus one. Uh, this is my new, okay, this is, this curly A is the curly A where we uh, removed one um, set from each disjoint, uh, from each complementary pair. So we'll later on have to double that, but let's just stick with this A. So we get that uh, this A is at most uh, n choose zero plus plus n choose p minus one 
um, and putting back the uh, complements um, we get that uh, the old A has size at most twice that. And then the last remark I'll make uh, is that um, remember that n it was 4p and so p minus 1 is roughly n over 4 so we're looking at the sum of the binomial coefficients up to n over 4 and if we divide by 2 to the n that's giving us the probability that uh, if you choose if you toss a coin n times you get at most n over 4 heads and when n is large that's an exponentially small well it is an exponentially small probability but an, an absolutely tiny probability when uh, n is large so uh, so that gives us that um, a is exponentially smaller than 2 to the n or equivalently 2 to the minus n times the size of a is exponentially small in n Okay, so I'm going to stop there for this video. And in the next one, I'm going to give you two wonderful applications of this result. Um, and I think if, you just, if I just showed you the applications, you just wouldn't dream, unless you've seen it all before, you wouldn't dream that this route would be the one to take to prove those applications.